Hi, I'm Jennifer. And I'm Jose. Welcome to this video about setting up Proloco to Go for bilingual Spanish and English. Starting in 4.1, you can create a vocabulary that allows a user to quickly switch between Spanish and English. We'll be showing you how to create and customize this kind of vocabulary in this video. If you've already set up a user with the Crescendo vocabulary, you can quickly make this vocabulary bilingual in English and Spanish. Only the Crescendo vocabulary can be used with more than one language. So to, to check if your existing user is based on Crescendo, you can do this. You go to Options and Vocabulary and Vocabulary Level. And if you see these three options here, Basic Communication, Intermediate Core, and Advanced Core, then congratulations, you're in Crescendo, and you don't have to make a new vocabulary. You can just activate another language in your current vocabulary, and we'll be showing you those steps later in this video. For those of you who are just starting out with Proloco to Go, or who have an existing vocabulary that isn't based on Crescendo, you'll need to get started by making a new Crescendo-based vocabulary. And here's how you do that. Go to Options, and then I'm going to go back to User, and Add User. And it's, this is going to walk me through how to make a new vocabulary. So I'll name it Josefina. And next, Okay, so here I'm going to choose Spanish. You can choose either English or Spanish. It doesn't make a difference. Um, you'll just be picking one and then immediately activating the other language. So which one you choose first doesn't matter. So I'll go to next. And here I get to choose the region of Spanish that I want to use. North American Spanish is based on the Spanish spoken in Mexico and the US. If you're from other parts of South or Central America, we recommend that you also use North American Spanish. While you'll notice some differences between the vocabulary and how Spanish is spoken in your area, North American Spanish will still be closer to your local Spanish than Spanish from Spain. So I'll pick North American Spanish, and now I pick a Spanish voice. We happen to have some Spanish voices already downloaded. So that's what you see here, Emilio and Valeria in this installed voices section. You can pick any voice that is not already downloaded if you like. Proloquo to Go will start the download process for you. All voices are free, but you must be connected to Wi-Fi to download them. If you're not on Wi-Fi, a temporary Spanish voice will be used. You can always download the higher quality voice later when you're on Wi-Fi. So we have three voices that have both English and Spanish versions. That's Emilio and Valeria, and then Rodrigo, this first voice here on the, the downloadable voices. These voices are great for bilingual users because the voice sounds more consistent between languages. They've been recorded by the same person. I'm going to pick Hola. Valeria and then go to next. Now I need to select Crescendo in order to have a bilingual vocabulary and that's selected by default. So I'll press next. And here we have the vocabulary levels. Um, we've got three levels, basic, intermediate, and advanced. We recommend that you choose intermediate uh, because that's the, what we found is the most useful for most people. For more information about Crescendo and vocabulary levels, see our other videos. So I've selected Intermediate Core, and now I need to select my grid size. And you'll see that I can preview some of the grid sizes. Uh, we recommend selecting the largest grid size that the user can physically and visually handle. This way the user doesn't need to navigate as much to reach the vocabulary he needs. See our other videos for more information about choosing your grid size. I'm going to pick 6 by 10 because I think that has a lot of really nice language on it. And I'm going to go to next. It's best to just leave the options choice set to defaults unless you have another vocabulary on the iPad with very specific access method and interaction settings that you want to copy. 
Okay, now I'll go to new user to get started. So now you are seeing our new Crescendo Spanish vocabulary. Let me show you a few of the features that we added to properly support Spanish. The first thing you will notice is the split in the to be verb. Now we have estar, estar ser, and ser. So these are very useful. For example, if I go to the scrapping board, I can say Estoy feliz. Estoy feliz. I am happy. But I can also say Soy amable. Soy amable. I'm kind. We also included support for the reflexive pronouns. Me gustan las hamburguesas. Me gustan las hamburguesas. I like hamburgers. We also have support for some Spanish particles you need that, for example, to make questions. Hay hamburguesas para comer. Signo de cierre de hay hamburguesas para comer. Now let's see how to activate the English version of the vocabulary and switch between the two. We go to options, one level back, speech and language, manage languages, and we're going to pick English United States. We have to pick a voice. I'm going to pick Valeria English, so it nicely fits with our Spanish version of Valeria. Hello, my name is... And now I activate the language. It takes a little time when you first activate the language. On a slower device like an iPad 2, this can take up to a minute. After the activation is complete, switching between languages is very fast. As you can see, even though we activated English, we are still showing Spanish. You can have more than one language active at a time, but only one of these languages is the current language. You can see in the voices selection that two languages are active. The check mark in front of Spanish shows that Spanish is the current language. To switch to English, I can tap English, but there is an easy way to do this. If I go out of options, I can tap the share button. And here I can use the button change language. Using the same button again, I can go back to Spanish. Customizing a bilingual vocabulary is almost the same as customizing a monolingual vocabulary. You can modify and add buttons and sort fringe vocabulary using vocal priority to meet your user's needs. You can see our other videos on customizing Prolocodigo 4 for more details about this process. But there are a few details you need to know so that the user can have access to the same fringe words and messages in both your English and your Spanish vocabulary. When you change the properties of a button in a multilingual vocabulary, these changes only apply to the button as it appears in the current language. This is how we're able to have the buttons that speak the right word in the current language, no matter what the current language is. This means that when you change a button in one language, you should switch to the other language to make sure any changes that might be needed in the other language are done. Let's see how this works by customizing a button in the About Me folder. I'm going to go to the Chat folder. And acerca de mí. And go into Edit Mode. And I'm going to take the name. And you'll see that it starts out mi nombre es. And you have to fill in the name. So I will fill in. Josefina. And this picture does not look like me, so I am going to choose a picture. And here I am. And so in Spanish now I've, I'm all set up. What I'm going to do now is go to the quick menu and switch to English. And what you'll see when I select my name is that 
the text-to-speech doesn't contain my name. So I will add it here. And you'll also see that this symbol is the original older symbol, but you'll see that the photo that I took for my name is one of the choices I can pick for the symbol. So I'm going to choose that so it will be consistent with the Spanish. And now, my name is Josefina. My name is Josefina. In English, I have spoken in English, and in Spanish, Mi nombre es Josefina. It speaks in Spanish. When you add a button, it's only added to the current language, but we've given you a quick way to get those buttons into the other language. I'm going to go back into edit mode, and I'm going to add a button, and I'm going to add a button about my cat. My text to speak, let's see, I'm in Spanish. I think I will switch to English because I speak English better than Spanish. And I'm going to add a button about my cat. I'll pick that symbol, that's okay. I'll change the label to cat. And now if I switch to Spanish, what you'll see is all of a sudden my cat is gone. How can I get that button into Spanish because I want to talk about my cat no matter what language I'm in? I can go to quick menu and here we have a new action called add missing buttons from English. This will take any buttons that are in English and not visible in Spanish and make them visible in Spanish. So if I tap add missing buttons from English, it tells me it's given me one new button. Let's put it in the primary level and I can see that my cat is there. If I had added buttons to both primary and secondary, it would have moved those buttons into primary and secondary in the same way. So switch back to English. There's cat. And in Spanish, there's cat. I would still need to come in here and translate my cat is called fox into Spanish, which Jose is going to do for me now. Mi gato se llama fox. Perfect. What the Add Missing Buttons is doing is moving the added buttons from storage into the level that they were added in the other language. If you've added a lot of buttons in one language and only want some of them in the other language, you can manually move buttons from storage as needed. If we go to Food, Lunch, I'm going to add a few items that I typically about, talk about them in Spanish, like for example, Salad, fideuá, jamón serrano, and of course, paella. Now, if I switch to English, as you can see, those buttons are not here. But I don't talk about all those things in English, so I will just pick salad and serrano ham. So now I have my vocabulary optimized in the way I talk in both languages. You can leave the buttons to be different in two languages, or you can use copy and paste to quickly make the same buttons show in both languages in the same order without having to move them around. So let's see how we do this. I am going to use the select all button to select all of the buttons in English, and I'm going to move these to storage. Don't panic. Now I am going to move to Spanish. I'm going to select all of the buttons and now I'm going to copy them. Then I switch back to English and I paste. 
And what you'll see is I have the fidewa and the paella, um, and I have things in the same order as they were in Spanish. So we've been showing you both English and Spanish on Proloquo to Go, but you may have noticed that while the buttons used to communicate can be seen in Spanish, the language in the options is in English only. So you can see all the buttons are in Spanish now, but all of the labels in the options are in English. If you need to see the options in Spanish, as well as our manual and help system, you'll need to switch to the language of your iPad to Spanish. I'll show you how to do that, but I won't go through the final step because it will cause the iPad to go to sleep and wake up again. So what I would do is I would go out of Proloquo to go and go to your settings app. You'll be in general. Scroll down and find language and region. Tap on iPad language and find the language that you want. I'm not going to finish doing this because it will cause the iPad to restart, but I would just pick a language, tap on the done button here, and it's going to ask me if I want to change to Spanish. I'll just cancel this here, but that's how you do it if you want to change the whole iPad to Spanish. So that completes this video about creating a bilingual user in Proloco to Go 4.1. We recommend that you go to our website and find other resources like other videos about how to do things in Proloquo to Go and sign up for our Facebook groups where you can get even more information.